My name is Marissa Kavehi Loving. Um, I'm an NSF postdoc in the School of Math at Georgia Tech. So I think I've always been pretty good okay at math. Um, I really enjoyed math when I was a kid. My dad is actually a math teacher, a public school math teacher, and my mom homeschooled me growing up. So I was, I always felt like I could do mathematics. In fact, I never really felt any sort of inhibition about doing mathematics until I was in graduate school. I think I decided I wanted to become a mathematician right at the beginning of uh, undergrad. So I actually started undergrad as a computer science major. I ended up graduating with a BS in computer science and a BA in math. Um, but in my first year, I took, like my very first semester, I took a calculus two course. Um, and my professor was an amazing lecturer and he invited a bunch of us from that course to take in the following semester. So in the second semester of my first year, um, to take a point set topology course with him, which was being offered for the first time as a, as a topics course. And he was actually did low dimensional topology. That was his research area. And so sort of at the end, he, he talked some about like knots and cypress surfaces and things like that. And I like after that added the math major <laughs> and was basically dead set from then on on going to graduate school. So I am sort of officially a geometric group theorist. Um, and that sort of falls within the sort of broader scope of low dimensional topology and geometric topology. Um, so I specifically focus on studying mapping class groups of surfaces. So these are two dimensional manifolds. You can think of this as like the skin of an orange or like the glaze on a donut. And some of the things that I specifically like to study where the group theory sort of comes into this topology is I study the mapping class group of the surface. Um, which you can think of sort of informally as the group of symmetries of the surface. Um, one sort of example that many people may have seen thinking of sort of symmetries of an object is if you think of like a square and think how you can sort of act on it by rotating it or like reflecting it over a line. And it might be a little bit harder to think of that when you have like a sphere or a torus, that's what we call the glaze on a donut. Um, but you can have sort of the same type of things by looking at sort of maps of that surface to itself. And so I study the, that group and I study sort of different behaviors that you can have on that surface. So a lot of my work ends up being sort of very combinatorial, um, thinking about either sort of graphs that are associated to my surface or even th just thinking about constructions of curves on my surface. So I did my undergrad at the University of Hawaii at Hilo and that's on the big island in Hawaii, which is also where I grew up. So I grew up living at home. Um, I grew up living at home, of course, but I also went to undergrad living at home. And so the first time I was away from home was going to grad school. So I went to grad school at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, which is sort of in the middle of cornfields in um, Illinois. And I had never been to the Midwest prior to accepting my position there. And so it was a big culture shock. Um, and it was sort of my first time really entering into the bigger mathematics community. I guess that is sort of the case for most folks going to graduate school. Um, and it was really tough. So graduate school was, was very difficult, um, mostly because I felt extremely isolated. Um, I was typically like one, of, one, if not the only woman of color in, in many of the mathematical spaces that I was in. And I felt very alienated sort of in my department and even in sort of the woman focused spaces within the department. Um, as far as I know, I'm the first Native Hawaiian woman to receive a PhD in mathematics. Um, and that is sort of in itself, it sort of me means that I just didn't have a lot of people who had sort of come from the same place as me and were going in the same direction as me. And so when it comes down to it, some, one of my probably biggest difficulties, both in graduate school and continuing has just been encountering a lot of racism, um, in mathematics and sort of the combination of racism with sexism and the way that oftentimes I'm not, not allowed to talk about or discuss that experience because in mathematical spaces, I should not bring any identities of my own <laughs> into them except being a mathematician. And in women in math spaces, it's sort of often I'm shut down when I try to talk about my experience being a non-white woman in mathematical spaces. And so that was, that was something that was really challenging in grad school. And to be honest, it's continued to be a challenge in my postdoc. Um, 
I think the last couple of years of grad school, I, I really enjoyed. I sort of got into a really great research group. I had a fantastic advisor and I had sort of built my own bubble in my grad program. I had some phenomenal um, friends and just sort of had built out a support system. And needing, I sort of just anticipated that that meant I had sort of gotten to my next level mathematically and like, it's gonna be a little bit more smooth sailing. And so I was really excited about my postdoc. And it turned out that I sort of had just like built myself what I needed there. And going to a new place, a lot of that was sort of stripped away. And so the past year and a half has been really challenging. <laughs> um, trying to be in a new place where I sort of don't have that support. And I'm now in a postdoctoral role, so I don't sort of have the same like I don't have an advisor looking out for me. And, and so it's just been very challenging, <laughs> I will say. So I did mention this already, but I think it's worth mentioning twice <laughs> that as far as I know, I'm the first Native Hawaiian woman to earn a PhD in mathematics. Um, and that is certainly something I'm um, very proud of. Uh, I, I definitely carried a lot of fear with me during grad school. <laughs> It reinforced by my peers and by certain mentors that I wasn't good enough to be there and that I wasn't going to be able to make it mathematically. And it's sort of very hard to keep going when you're being told that, you know, you already have that voice inside you, but having it sort of voiced externally um, without any role models to really show you that you can do it, it's really hard to keep going. And so I'm really proud that I, I earned my PhD. I'm, I'm very proud of earning an NSF postdoctoral research fellowship. Um, that was something that I, again, had sort of had in my mind early in grad school, but didn't really think I was going to be able to get. <laughs> um, I'm really proud of that. And I'm really proud of the way that I have become an advocate for um, young women of color, uh, especially black and brown women of color um, in mathematics and that I've been able to open doors to people and mentor people in ways that I wish I had been mentored. Um, and I don't, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think that if you had asked me at <laughs> the sort of in my third year of grad school, if I could be here that I would, that I would think it was possible. So I'm really, I'm really proud of, of the way that I'm helping change the face of mathematics. So I was super lucky to have a very, very supportive undergraduate experience. Um, talking to like other students of color, especially now that I'm a little bit more senior to, to the undergraduate crew, like I, I'm surprised by how many people have had really poor like mathematics experiences in undergrad because I had extremely supportive mentors. I had an amazing cohort of people who I was taking my math classes with. Um, so there's a bunch of people that I can name from undergrad. My undergraduate research advisor at UH Hilo is Efren Ruiz. Um, he continues to be a mentor and support to me. Um, Bob Palayo, I mentioned, was the person who encouraged me to take his point set topology course my freshman year and was really instrumental in me um, wanting to go to graduate school. Um, Reina Ivanova, she was the chair of the department at UH Hilo for a lot of the time I was in undergrad and she was the one who told me about the NSF grad fellowship and mentored me through applying for that. Um, my classmates, um, Ashley Kalauli is now a, a PhD candidate at UC Santa Barbara and she was the valedictorian for our class and she was in basically all of my math classes and having her there being excellent, <laughs> like constantly sort of pushed me to be better. Um, and we still keep in touch and we have, we are both now co-founders for the Indigenous Mathematicians website. Um, and yeah, there's been so many, I could go on and on. Vanessa Rivera Quinones, who is one of the former mathematician people, she, um, we were roommates for a lot of grad school actually, and she has been just a constant source of encouragement and community. Um, my older brother, <laughs> Josh, he was one of the reasons I wanted to go to grad school because he wanted to go to grad school. He did his PhD in bioinformatics at Boston University. And a lot of sort of knowing what to do was because I saw him do it before me. And so I knew to go to like undergrad summer research programs and I knew to look for fellowships to apply for and I knew to go to conferences to present my research. Um, my mom <laughs> who taught me math when I was little, <laughs> um, my PhD advisor, Chris Leininger, um, I don't think I would have stayed in grad school if I hadn't picked him as, ended up picking him as my advisor. 
Um, he has at many points sort of played a crucial role in creating a space for me to actually be a mathematician. Um, and there's so many more people, <laughs> I, I really could go on and on. Um, but I think it's one of the things that is so important to remember that like none of us has got where we are by ourselves. And it's sometimes easy to think that, I think especially in mathematics, um, a lot of the ways that, even though our work is so collaborative, a lot of the ways that we sort of like build our heroes is sort of very singular. Um, even so sort of the stories we tell about how people do mathematics is sort of much more like lonely and isolated than how it often is in reality. And so I think it's important to remember that we all go where we are because of the people who have helped us be there. And that that's why it's so important to be thinking about the way that we build our communities that allow people from all backgrounds and all walks of life to be there with us. <laughs> And that we aren't gate, sort of gatekeeping based on people who sort of have something similar to us. Because I think that's one thing that is a real struggle for a lot of um, students of color is having mentors that don't necessarily see themselves in them. Um, and I think we need to be sort of very on guard for that because everybody can be a mathematician, um, but not everyone is given the opportunity to be. The thing that I just want <laughs> any up and coming mathematician, or maybe even a farther along mathematician who's feeling weary on this long journey <laughs> um, to know, right, is that, that there's a place for you here in mathematics. Um, there's always gonna be people, especially if you, you come from a marginalized background or you have a marginalized identity, there's gonna be people who tell you you don't belong. And that can be explicit and that can be implicit, um, but that is not on you. That, and that is not a reflection of you or your ability. That's, that's a reflection of sort of their own, their own shortcomings and their own um, inability to see your potential and your ability. Um, you have everything you need to be a mathematician. And um, sometimes it's not gonna feel like that, but there's people who want you to be here and who are rooting for your success and who will be able to be mentors for you and advocates for you. Um, and sometimes it takes a little time to find that and that can be really lonely and discouraging, um, but you deserve to be here. Mm -hmm.